Okay, so we have our color type and we have a solid color for that type. Now this solid color is interesting because it's actually a layering of a folder color overlay on top of individual ones. It's green at like 50% on top of red at 100%. And you get this kind of muddied uh, yellowish ochre brown. Now, if I like that color, I can use my eyedropper tool and save that color to my foreground. Right? And then just to make my life easier, I can go to cover overlay and instead of making it this thing, because I know I don't want the red, I know I don't want the green, I can just change it to my foreground color. And set that to be 100%. And then I can turn these effects off and just at the moment work on all of them through the folder. So any if layer style you do to the folder will affect everything within that folder. Now, once you have the, your color overlay, you want to build these three backgrounds in. The white, the gray, the black. Now, right now, that color works best on the black. To me. It works pretty well on the white. Right? And it doesn't really work well at all on the gray. So your overlay color is either going to be closer to black, closer to white, or closer to gray. Mine's closer to the middle gray. Which means for all of these different backgrounds I might choose, and I can look at different inspiration, like these old circus posters. Some of these backgrounds have the type on white. Some of these backgrounds have the type on something quite dark, like black. And some of these, most of these, have the type on something that's in the middle, like a middle gray like a light blue or an orange or a red, but a red is actually closer to black because red is just a very dark value for such a saturated color. So these circus posters give a lot of punch and something that this inspiration has in common is you'll see it's basically just a solid fill. Every once in a while you'll get a gradient fill, something like that. but they all have some sort of stroke or offset or outline around them. And even this, which is a classic modernist early 20th century circus poster, which this site where you bid on art is making very hard to see, but all it is is outline. So sometimes it's just the outline of the type you might want, but it's definitely the outline of the type we're going to play with. Sometimes that outline can be light on dark, and sometimes the type can be light on dark. And sometimes you can even build in offsets that are dimensional. So by making a second copy and then filling it with solid yellow and then just pushing it as an offset up and back, kind of shrinking it back, it gives the illusion of three dimensions. And then the type itself has a double stroke. It has a white stroke and then a dark blue stroke. Whereas this is just solid color with a, with a blue stroke. I love how they squeeze the and in there. So once you have to kind of make this for yourself, you'll start recognizing these things. And they use A and D for and there, and they use an ampersand for and there, and they fit it all into, you can kind of see how the text blocking really works in this concept. And honestly, this is probably my favorite, probably the oldest of these. This is from around 1943, but it's just so simple. Solid color, pretty thick stroke. That's it. But that's on a lighter background. So maybe I want to go with that. And so that would take my white background. And then with my vector color type, I'm going to add to the effects and I'm going to add a stroke. Now the stroke could just be black. That might be a good place to start. And I'm going to put it on the outside of the letters and then I'm just going to play with the thickness, right? 
Now, the closer your kerning is, the spacing between your letters, and mine is very close, the less space you have for an external stroke, right? Like where my O notches into my G. So I might have to do a very little one there. Or I could always push it to be on the inside. And then I can get as thick as I want while still keeping my kerning intact. But I want to keep an eye on some of the smaller interior shapes, like the ones inside this O. It's like a tiger eye, right? Because if I make that too big, right now it's at 10 pixels, it will just go solid. And so this is probably the most I would ever do, but yeah, then I lose everything here. Now that's a problem with doing it on the folder. I can also do this individually to each vector and set different settings. But I think the 10 worked pretty well. The 10 inside, maybe go a little bit bigger. So it's about a proportion. And if I don't like it there, I'll go 10 here for the folder, but then I'll go individually into it for my work one, right? And then I will say, turn that on, and I will turn on its stroke, and I'll make it red for the time being, just so I can see the thickness. Oh, that's interesting. So, something to know. What's going on here? What's going on is that I have the color overlay of this brown on the folder. And so if I extend the outside space of anything in that folder, even as a layer style, it's going to treat those pixels as something it needs to do that effect to on the folder level. So how do I fix that? Very simple. New things every day. I'm just going to take that color off of the folder. I'm just going to turn it off. Very simple. And then turn it on for these individual ones. So just select my foreground color. So that I can play with what's called a double stroke on the folder. I can also duplicate these and layer up as many of these kind of vector effects as I want. So to kind of clear it fully, I'm going to move these out of the folder, erase that folder, make a new folder. And I wanted to show you how you can just do layer styles on a folder to do everything all, all together. But if I want to separate them out, which I do, it's better to do them individually. Okay, and then I'll move them back into the folder. Okay, and then step one is doing the color overlay. There it is for in progress. Let's put them in order here. And then let's turn it on for work. And let's change it to the right color, which I have in my foreground. Okay, next, for the stroke for work, I'm just going to start with black. And I'm going to go bigger. And I'm going to do not outside, but center this time. Or maybe inside. I actually liked how inside looked. But because this lettering is a little bit bigger, I can make that stroke bigger without losing quality. Yeah, so it looks like 24 for that one. 
And then for this one, let's add a stroke, and it seemed like 10 was the right one on the inside. I can get away with 13, I think. All right, is this looking a little bit more circusy? I think so. I think those strokes really help. Does it look good on black? Kind of, but notice with the black outline how thin that inside is. So I might actually back those up a little bit, which is again why we like to have it on these three backgrounds. So maybe 20. 18. And this may be 10, not 13. Okay, but the other option, of course, to have it look good on black and white is to not have it just solid black, to actually choose a color for the stroke. And a way to do that is to maybe choose a color from the image itself. So even my black lines on my spot illustration are not solid black. I did a blue kind of dissolved texture on them. If you zoom in, you can see that there's blue in there. So maybe I use a dark blue. So once you have the color selector, you can pick a color from anything that's open in Photoshop. So that kind of green is interesting. This darker green. I like that. And I can save it. I can use my eyedropper tool at any time and steal a color. So I'll zoom in on that stroke, use my eyedropper, steal that. It's not black. And then I'm going to apply it to my in-progress stroke. All right, now let's see how that looks on gray. So that outline helps. And on black, it's still very dark. So I know of the different backgrounds I'm going to choose for my poster, probably not going to choose one that's, that's close to black. But I wanted to have versatility. So what I can do is what's called a double stroke. And I can even try it with the folder. And this one will be brighter. So by now putting a different stroke, you can see how I can get the double on the folder. I could also just make duplicates of these and just do a different stroke underneath. You can layer this type any way you want, right? But it preserves my kerning. It gives me both an inside and an, an outside outline. That white is working a little bit better for the top than for the bottom, so maybe I'll increase the black stroke on the bottom. So I'm putting a stroke on the folder, and I'm putting a stroke on each individual one. Now, you can also put double strokes. I don't love doing this because then you have to undo them. But you see how each of these, inner shadow, stroke, color overlay, gradient overlay, and drop shadow, all have a plus? You can add an additional stroke just in here. So you have lots and lots of options. But I don't want that, so I'm going to delete one. Because I, I, I like to keep it kind of within the defaults for when I use it. So that works pretty well. Now, what if I want that type to just pop a little bit better? So now it works on black. Now it works on gray, but I think it looks a little dead still, and it works on white. And it's clean and simple. The one last thing I might play with is some texture and then some gradient. And I'll just do this to the whole thing using the folder, folder effects. So the gradient overlay, this will affect everything. I'm going to choose